Hello YouTubers, uh, Tross here, back again with some more Kerbal Space Program. We'll be playing uh, some more scenarios this time. And uh, last time we uh, did this scenario, which apparently we went a little far. <laughs> we were just uh, tasked with performing the Renovable Burn and catching up to the asteroid. Uh, we actually docked with it, uh, which apparently is this mission. <laughs> Scenario, the Retriever E2 spacecraft is only a few meters away from the asteroid, ready to deploy its grappling device and attach itself. Can we maneuver it into a closed orbit around Kerbin's moon? Let's see if we can. Okay, well, there we are. There is the asteroid. Um, that screen's looking a little strange. Target the center of mass. We are currently moving at point two meters per second away from the uh, asteroid, it appears. It's a uh, not appear to have a Kerbal. Why do we not appear to have a Kerbin? Because we aren't anywhere near Kerbin. That's very interesting. Alright, um, that's pretty much lined up, let's open the arm, I'm just going to say control from here, and we're going to very gently thrust towards the asteroid, I'm not sure how far away, but this is... We'll be there in about three minutes. We'll do a little better than that. Make sure we're right on here. There we go, we have... We have docked. Um, we now want to get back to Kerbin. Closer. Please slow down a bit. Get that little closest approach flag. Can you stay up? That 
Definitely not. Um, 194. It's getting further. So you want. Okay, there we have an intercept. Uh, two thirty seven. Five. That actually overdoes it. The moon is about eleven. Six. Eight. We'll, we'll stay at eight because uh, the moon may not be close to where we uh, are. So that looks like we need to do a hundred and fifteen meter per second burn. And then wait like three quarters of a year. <laughs> um, the problem is going to be burning in the correct direction. SAS for now. So I'm trying to line up with the 270, so that's approximately where we have to go. Trying to now slow down as we get close to the 270 line. We have to basically stop. This is where I'll use the SAS. <laughs> basically, rotating the whole ship here so we can use our engines in the correct direction. Alright, let's try... Um, that's opposite of the way we need to go. And turn off RCS. Alright, we have... We're spinning in the correct direction now to head towards the target marker. seconds here, I'm going to burn the opposite direction, or thrust as the case may be, it's kind of overshot it a bit, but not too bad, I don't think, on SAS, in fact, um, we can tell SAS to hold the maneuver. Now, I know the maneuver is in one day, five hours, and 16 minutes, but being like 300 days out, um, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. The one thing I am worried about is does this ship have the same problem the previous one did, which is the fuel lines weren't 
hooked up correctly, so once these ran out of fuel, we came to a stop. We'll have to see if this starts draining. Uh, we look pretty good. I am going to throttle up. don't see this going down, so this is having the same problem. Yes, those are definitely going down. Uh, let's see if I can quickly correct this. If I click out here. Filling those tanks faster than they are draining. Alright, I'm gonna change us from maneuver to stability assist. So as we get close to the end, that's gonna basically move as it is doing right now. How's our current? That, that's, that is not bad. Why is that moving? We shouldn't be thrusting in any particular direction. Let's turn off RCS. All right, so we have used just a little of our liquid fuel. Uh, that is one change. Atomic engines now only use a liquid fuel. So I think we are uh, ready to time warp. I'm going to say warp here, and uh, I'll see you in about a year as we travel around the sun here. You can see we are behind Kerbin. Um, I'm not even sure which direction to look. <laughs> But now we are lower in orbit, so we are catching up. And then here will be our lowest point, and we'll start coming back up. Theoretically, in time to um, just meet it. It should be out here somewhere, but I really can't tell. Okay, we are about five days from encountering it. You think I should be able to see it. These dots look different to you. <laughs> there, there it is. And there's the moon. One. <laughs> Minus is around here somewhere as well. At this point, it's probably a speck. Right, we are slowly approaching. Hmm. 
once we get inside the Kerbin's sphere of influence, the uh, nav ball will flip around here. So that will be our indication. orbital velocity is relative to the sun. Uh, once we're in Kerbin's sphere of influence, it should be relative to Kerbin and it hopefully won't be nearly that quick. How are we doing? Just a few more hours. Really hope we're going... <laughs> have a decent uh, orbit past the moon. Um, time warp just dropped down to 50 and well here we go. Of course we don't have a decent orbit. <laughs> Far, uh, two hours. That's great. Okay, we are coming in underneath Kerbin. The moon and everything actually orbits counterclockwise in general. to get going horizontally. Look at that. Um... to get more horizontal. There we go. Um, let's target the moon. That's coming inside the moon, which would generally put us in an orbit in that direction. Uh, it's not really the direction we want. We need to speed up here. I think that will give us the direction we want. And... Oh, it's pretty high orbit. Um,
Alright, that'll be a high orbit, but it'll be less than a million meters, or a thousand kilometers. And... You know, all we need to do is really get an orbit. It doesn't have to be a perfect one. Uh, let's turn on SAS. And let's see, point at maneuver now. Is SAS alone going to have... Oh, it looks like we do have enough torque here. Now, this is one of the light... I'm assuming this is a Type A or maybe B asteroid. And type is based on mass, although I don't know offhand what the limits are. All right, we have to slow down. Uh, maybe we'll lose almost all our speed at this point, or I should say at this point. It's estimating a approximately a 2 minute 33 second burn. Of course, SAS blows way past where it needs to be. I'll turn off SAS for a moment so it doesn't get too much speed. Yes, back on. Now tell it to hold the maneuver and tell it to use RCS if it needed. That's probably close enough that it's not gonna swing past it too much. Um, the only problem now is our electric charge, but it looks like we have a bunch of batteries that I don't see for some reason. I'm not going to question it. Alright, I'm going to time warp a bit here. We're just time warping in. And lost track of Kerbin, but that's okay. Um, nope, there it is. We're basically almost firing directly away from it. We're going to slow down and shift our orbit sideways so we swing around and catch up with the moon when it comes around a few times, because that's going to be quite a few days. Alright, um, we want to start this burn... We want to do half on each side of the node, but we're not going to be able to do full throttle. I'm going to say, uh, aim as if it was a three minute burn and start a minute and a half early. Alright, I'm going to turn on RCS just so we hold position, and we're going to start the burn in 3, 2, 1, start now. I'm just going to back it off to 90%, and because we're not wired up correctly, I should say piped up correctly, cut it all. Alt, 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 alt.
Ow. Okay. I'm going down slightly. I'm trying to reduce thrust until all right, it's going back up. gonna looks like maybe wind up decently for this burn. If that time is correct. And we're getting into the overheating territory. That was a problem last time. Cut the engine. I mean, we're far enough away that we can make a correction. Um, or heat, go away, please. And of course, when I did click, I mess up the transfer. Oh, let's get the fuel all transferred, and we can pick the burn back up. We'll probably have to do a small correction. I mean, we're 16 days out, so a slight bit off isn't going to affect us to a very great degree, but uh, it's still going to affect us. Go to halfway, uh, halfway heating this up, one third thrust. Still heating up. Those fuel tanks go like they did last time. Well, we don't have a backup. Heat management is a new and interesting part of the game. So it looks like maybe you can do minute long burns or so with these atomic rocket motors. But it looks like you then need to let them cool off for quite a while. You can still see they're glowing red. And uh, I think even these are glowing a little bit because of the heat being transferred. And it looks like they need quite a while to cool down. Something that I didn't plan for. Let's uh, fast forwarding a little bit. Help. Gonna go to about five minutes. Alright, let's uh, refuel these. Hoping the additional fuel mass helps absorb some heat. Oh, 
Not sure how the calculations on that work. second left. Well, this is turning out to be a lot more tedious than I was hoping. to go under. Now, the problem is we're running out of fuel here. We're down to about a third of fuel and we still have to get into orbit around the moon. Hopefully that will be a lot less uh, of a delta V change. Yeah. Time warp a bit. Let's say up to 10 minutes. 12 minutes. Ah, uh, this will be good. here, put it in stability assist mode, and transfer some fuel.
do the time warp again. Alright, I'm now going to watch the map as we burn, and I'm going to cut it when we seem to have a good intercept. Should stop there. All right, we're not overheating yet. <laughs> All right, that's getting more inclined, so I think right there is good for now. So it took a, a slight bit more. But, um, let's see, um, warp there, we are coming into Kerbin, there we are, we're, map, about an hour, from our intercept. That will be uh, a nice equatorial intercept. If we can get it. We seem to be turning in the wrong direction. Correcting one way and now correcting the other way instead of attempting to do both at the same time, but it's overshot. Right, let's turn our CS off before it starts moving too quickly. Let's get back on. Alright, this is supposed to be a 14 second burn. Um, let's see how we do. We can do this one early. It's not that critical.
that's about good. The purple line now pretty much lined up with the green one. Alright, here... Well, let's not set this maneuver up yet. We want to warp until we're inside Lunar Influence. There we are. So we want to get captured. All right, that's how circular do we want this? We're seven sixty four. Something like that, two hundred meters per second. I think we should have that. Um, let's get the fuel tanks. Topped off. That's gonna be a few refills. At least one. It's not gonna all go in. Uh, all right. Here's the problem. That's not all gonna go in in one thrust. I don't think. And we only have about one more refill. It's about 200. So we have about <laughs> one and a quarter refills here. Oh, let's turn off RCS. We're going to get going way too fast. Well, even if we don't make the full 200, if we can get a, a good 150 or so, that, that should put us in orbit. That's just about good. Close am I? Actually, a little past the periapsis. we're in in the shadow. We're about 12 minutes out. I'm going to go to say 6 minutes before. Uh, 5 minutes before. This is going to take a few burns and refill. So let's Go in three, two, one. We do two thirds, basically. Have a better view. See our fuel ticking down, but so is our velocity. The question is, which will hit first? It's going down about by 4 a second. This is going down by 2 a second. Which it looks like it may be. Uh, 
why aren't we holding... Opposition. This SES was not enough. Let's go for true retrograde. We don't really need target. Alright, while we're taking this minor break, um, let's refuel. This will probably be the last time we can fully fuel those little tanks. Is about to have an orbit. There we go. Still got fuel. It's not a great orbit, however, it is an orbit. We have achieved what we set out to do. We got this asteroid into a lunar orbit, or a moonar orbit. Moonar orbit. <laughs> not the greatest, but it works. And uh, we can now send out another ship with more fuel and get a better orbit if needed. But I think that completes this scenario. What is next? EVA in Kerbin orbit. Well, that sounds rather easy. Well, it sounds easy. Here we go. We got Jeb here. He's got his little backpack on. Let's face the ship. Let's turn our lights on. And, uh... Always orientates towards the camera, so up, back a little, up. Okay, looks like the ladder is on top. Wiggle and board. 
Oh, it's B for board now. It used to be F. Here we go. We got Bill, Bob, and Jeb. Um... Um, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. Thought I was staging to, uh, let's, um, go back to the main menu there. Let's do that scenario one more time. Okay. Well, I don't want to. Now oh, it looks like I'm having a little issue again. I'll be back in one minute. Alright, we are back in this scenario. This will be set up slightly differently. But not that much. We're heading over to the pod. It looks like just the pod is in a different orientation. Yes, you can't dock with the docking port, Jeb. You have to get up. Grab. Board. Let's turn you retrograde. Let's manually turn you retrograde. And, uh... Activate your engine. And I know this probably isn't recommended. Especially, uh... The new... Aerodynamics. Bob and Jeb here. See, we're coming up over Kerbal Space Center right here. Right there. And that's as good as we're going to do. Let's see how that does. I'm actually going to get a small extra boost. But that really shouldn't change our path too much. It's not really holding retrograde. Just hold. Just hold tight. <laughs> This is going to be a quick landing. I 
No, we have three parachutes. Uh, that's great. So. You're probably going to need it. So we're coming down, we haven't even hit the answer yet. And uh, yeah, we're basically aimed for. Yeah, a point right off here. Now, we're going to slow down a bit once we're in the atmosphere, so it's going to come in, but I think we're still going to hit the water. Now, we're about to enter the atmosphere in a few seconds. And uh, we're actually not going that quickly, comparatively. We actually may wind up on the space center. Wouldn't that be interesting? Or just off the edge. <laughs> And I'm gonna pop the parachutes. And yeah, that spiked the G forces. But look at that. Coming down just off the Space Iron Coast, and look, that was our bottom part crashing into the water. Our rocket. Coming down eh, 36 meters per second currently. Not too bad. And we're actually going to really slow down at about 500 meters when these parachutes open up fully. It's going to be very shortly. One. There we go. Hey, we're down to about five meters per second. Yeah. Physical time warp here, physics warp. Just until we're about 50 meters above the ocean, because it's going to take uh, quite a bit of time without the time warp, because we're moving so slowly now. Six five, and here we go, just about splashing down. And there we go, we can see the top of the VAB. And I think that completes this scenario. So, uh, that covers this episode of Kerbal Space Program, playing some of the scenarios. Uh, we still have uh, three more to go, probably take them on next time, and I'll uh, see you guys then. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>